Good evening and welcome to the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago, TATS, ICT Open Forum. I'm your host, Wendell Etienne. This evening's discussion revolves around the issue of protecting our children online. Over the last year, the world has been thrust into a redefined digital ex existence and our young people's school, their education has not been spared. Now we have online platforms replacing the traditional brick and mortar structures that we have grown so accustomed to. However, their online experience and their safety online is not without concern. We have a very competent panel of presenters who will guide the discourse accordingly. And this group of presenters who I will introduce to you shortly will all address some of these issues. But before we get to them, we will now have a few opening remarks from the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago, TAT, Mr. Kirk Sukram. Kirk? Thank you, Mr. Etienne. Good night to the viewing and listening audience. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago's 32nd ICD Open Forum titled Protecting Our Children Online. This forum usually takes place at TAT's head office in Barataria. However, due to the now normal arising from the COVID-19 pandemic, and more so, the criticality of the issue being discussed, the forum is being held on live television to benefit a broader swath of the public. Some of you may recall that shortly after our students were required to attend classes online due to COVID-19, the Ministry of Education announced that there were an estimated 63,000 students who were without internet access service or ICT devices and sought the assistance from corporate Trinidad and Tobago to fill that gap. TAT stepped in and contributed 10,000 ICT devices, namely tablets, with internet access service to the Ministry of Education in collaboration with the Telecommunications Services of Trinidad and Tobago Limited, TSTT, and Digicel Trinidad and Tobago Limited. TAP took the view that the supply of such a large number of devices should be linked with the education of the recipients to ensure their effective use. Hence, TAT initiated an IT skills outreach program of which the primary objective is to facilitate the development of IT skills among the following persons. Parents of school-aged children who receive devices, students who receive devices, and at-risk students. A significant component of this training is to educate students and parents on internet safety. The beauty of holding tonight's event on live television is the fact that every member of the audience will benefit from the presentations of our subject matter experts and participate in the subsequent discussions. Tonight's program will raise awareness of parents, guardians, and young persons of issues related to internet safety, as well as equip the parents and guardians with strategies to educate their charges on the safe use of cyberspace. TAT, in its role of promoting equitable access to information by all citizens, is keenly aware of the need to ensure that the valuable and versatile tool, which the internet has become, can be used by our children safely and constructively. This need has become urgent in the last 12 months as the pandemic has resulted in children spending more time at home and online. Tonight, our three esteemed panelists will address psychological, technological, and cybersecurity issues associated with the use of the internet by children during this pandemic. In closing, I wish to thank our panelists, Ms. Alicia Hoyt, Inspector Daniel Hernandez, and Mr. Darren Dory, for graciously accepting our invitation to share their knowledge and experiences with us. Also, I wish to thank Mr. Wendell Etienne, for agreeing to employ his learned media skills as the moderator for this forum. Furthermore, I thank TTT Limited for hosting this important event, not only on television, but via its radio station and social media feed. And to you, the audience, do enjoy and participate in tonight's proceedings. Thank you, keep safe, and have a good night. Thank you very much, Mr. Sukram. 
My friends, safety is very important as here, and I can assure you that whilst we may appear on your screen to be fairly close, we are suitably distanced from each other, hence we have removed our masks only as we are seated here. Our competent crew are all masked and separate as well. So, let's meet our panelists. First, let me introduce Mr. Darren Dure. He's a digital anthropologist. That's right. He has been studying, researching, and presenting topics related to internet addiction, cyberbullying, and social media etiquette through his nonprofit organization, CyberSafe TT. He holds the post of webmaster at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus, and has presented voluntarily to over 20,000 students, teachers, parents, collectively in Trinidad and Tobago, the Caribbean, Latin America, and the UK. Seated next to Darren, we have Miss Alicia Hoyt. Alicia is a clinical psychologist who provides psychological and assessment services for private and corporate clients. Her work has extended regionally, providing psychological evaluations for vocational recruitment purposes for religious institutions. She possesses a master's degree in clinical psychology from Barry University, Florida. As a mother of five and from her work with educational assessments for children, her passion has become the lifting up of the Caribbean parent. The Caribbean Parenting Initiative is her brainchild, whose goal it is to support, educate, and empower Caribbean parent on a journey to a more positive parenting practice. Rounding off our presenters, we have Inspector Daniel Hernandez. He's a highly skilled and trained cybercrime investigator with over 22 years service to the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. He holds a master's degree in business administration, specializing in digital technology management from the University of Bedfordshire, England. This is where he gained knowledge to lead and transform the cyber and social media unit, formerly the cybercrime unit. Inspector Hernandez was appointed head of the cyber and social media unit in October of 2019 and has built public awareness of cybercrime through lectures and presentations within the TTPS at schools and to the business community. Welcome to each and every one of you. We have just about an hour with our viewers, so let's get right into it. Darren, I'm gonna allow you to take the lead. Thank you, thank you Wendell, and thank you for that introduction. I am definitely honored to share this stage with my esteemed colleagues. Each of them would definitely add a new perspective, a different perspective on this whole topic of online learning. Now CyberSafe TT has been doing conversations on cyberbullying, internet addiction, and social media etiquette long before COVID. COVID just made it a little bit more requested by you know, schools and parents alike. Uh, today, I am going to speak and add to the topic of technology and how parents can actually embrace technology and use technology to help them with their online learning. Now, that means to say that technology is not the silver bullet, because I'm sure my other two colleagues here would add to non-technical so solutions on the online parent sphere. Um, a lot of folks tend to blame technology, uh, but you know, it's I think a failure to really adapt and understand technology, uh, which is generally the true cause. And there is a fear. There is a fear of individuals, you know, wanting to understand technology. And I think this is where parents need to bridge that gap and start to understand terms such as parental control and content filtering because these are things that you will probably need to be doing right after the show, right? Looking at your devices and enabling things like parental control, uh, screen time management. These are things that help with managing the amount of time that your kids spend. Uh, we know that sometimes you may get into trouble, you know, spending too much time on, uh, online. Uh, and, you know, there are certain tips and techniques, even things like content filtering, uh, particularly in the area of online pornography. Uh, it's so easy for anyone, kids in particular, to gain access to adult and inappropriate material. Um, content filtering is something, another term, that I think we need to play a little bit of emphasis on, and I know uh, Inspector Hernandez is going to you know, touch on that a little bit as we go along. Now, there is one last point that I want to bring up here, and it's a little bit of research that I'm doing on the topic of internet idleness. Uh, you know, they say that uh, the... Um, Idle Hands at the Devil's Workshop. Mm -hmm. And I have an analogy as it pertains to being on the internet too much. Mm -hmm. You know, almost as if you've consumed all of the content mm -hmm. that the internet had for you, and now you're just looking for things. 
And that's where you probably get into trouble. That's where you probably find the inappropriate content. That's where you probably go look at things that not within your age group, right? Or even engage in illicit activities. And I really think that enabling things such as parental control, content filtering, screen time management, those key words, which is, those are the words that I want the parents to leave with today, would definitely help in being that parent in the virtual world. Thank you. Daniel, I'm going to jump straight over to you. I realize. <laughs> uh, the digital environment and remote learning have moved classrooms online and have young children connected to their home networks for most of their day. It presents a wide range of benefits to children, whilst also exposing them to various risks, including cyberbullying, harmful content, as spoken by our last presenter there, and inappropriate contacts with strangers, which we'll be talking about later on. Cyberbullying and other forms of online violence can affect young children each time they go online and log into social media or messaging platforms. When browsing the internet, children may be exposed to hate speech, violent content, including messages that incite self-harm and even, sad to say, suicide. It has never been easier for child sex offenders to contact their potential victims, share images, and encourage others to commit offenses. Children may be victimized through the production, distribution, and consumption of sexual material, or they may be groomed for sexual exploitation, which I'm, I, I'm pretty, uh, I've, I've, I'm very passionate about because of what you are seeing happening on the uh, threat landscape as it relates to our children, our nation's children. Just a quick start. Um, in 2019, a report released by the UNICEF indicates one in three young people in 30 countries said they have been a victim of online bullying. With one in five reporting having skipped school due to cyberbullying and violence. The report goes further to reveal that some 80% of children in 25 countries report feeling in danger of sexual abuse or exploitation online. So some things that we want the parents to be um, aware of, uh, how can I protect my children with this onslaught of uh, attacks coming to our young people? Because they have to be online. I remember the, uh, the analogy that comes to mind is the, the guy with the, with the, uh, who sells coconuts. He has, the, he has the, uh, the cutlass, but he used it because it's for his job. But that same cutlass could be used to commit an offense, you all understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So the internet, uh, the, how their children are online is the same situation where they have to use mm -hmm. the online uh, uh, platforms. However, it can be used to destroy them also. So some things that we will be touching on is we want parents to schedule screen time limits for children and devices. We want them to monitor what children are doing online. Now, one of the topics while we were discussing it Previously, we talk about we want the children, we want the parents to start bringing that parenting skills online, mm -hmm. and we'll be talking about that. And then we want to set rules for using social media. Stay on top of the information. Don't let things run away from you. Don't afraid. Don't be afraid of technology. It don't bite. <laughs> and we will talk later on. I have a little tip I want to leave with them, which speaks about limiting access to websites. And we'll talk about a simple little tip that parents can use right now that able for them to monitor what online content their children are participating in. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a parent of five, all of whom are in school, this is an overwhelming time. Uh, we have to parent, teach, and now you're telling me I have to keep my children safe online. That sounds like almost too much to have to do. But I want to suggest that there's a way to think about this. Uh, and there are skills that are well within our reach as parents. It's not as um, far-fetched as it may sound. So we're going to hear from Darren and Daniel a lot of the technicalities of how to keep our children safe online. 
But I want to suggest that we rethink protection as inoculation. We're busy dealing with COVID and the vaccine. We have seen how far masking takes us and washing our hands take us. And now we're ready for some stronger protection. The filters and the monitoring and the schedule protects our children up to a point. But they're having to be online more than ever before. They're having to face these dangers more than ever before. What we need to do is strengthen our children's defenses. And so we need to inoculate them. We need to immunize them against the dangers. True. We've listed those dangers. We talked about grooming adults seeking out children for sexual exploitation. We talked about harmful exposure to violent content, sexual content. We spoke about, and we're going to talk more about inappropriate sharing of information and the cyberbullying. I want to add a fifth behavioral addictions is now an issue. Right? Be, uh, because they're online more, and I love that term you used about internet idling, they're online more, they're more at risk of forming addictions. We have to not simply hide our children away, we have to strengthen them. How can we inoculate them? The strength of your relationship with your child can help to protect your child against the vulnerabilities that are available online. Yeah? Here's the fact. The part of the brain that we want our children to use the part that deals with judgment and reasoning and making good calls is not around until they're about 20, mm. right? It's not around until they reach about 20, 25. We can't expect these children to protect themselves online. Here's another little fact. The children who don't have a strong connection to a parent are more vulnerable because they're going to seek that control and that connection externally, yeah? Mm. They're going to seek the excitement and the connection outside of themselves. When they have a secure attachment to a parent or to an adult, that inner control exists and they're better able to uh, bounce back or resist or not go looking online for what they should be finding at home. And so we have the answer. It may sound overwhelming for parents, but the fact of the matter is what our children need more than anything is to have their emotional needs met by us, not the internet. And I'm willing to stop there <laughs> before when they'll tell me about too fast. <laughs> Thank you very much. To the viewers, at some point during the hour that we have with you, you will have an opportunity to participate as well. Once we get to that point, I'll let you know what the number is to call in and you can have access to this esteemed panel. But I want to go back, um, Darren, this is where I want to pull you in. In March of 2020, we were faced with this situation where everybody needed to get on a platform. Yeah. How, looking, looking back, back what, what would be the advice then from, from your quarters in terms of doing that responsibly? Wow, wow that's, that's a weighted question there, Wendell. <laughs> um, but I actually had the opportunity to work with a series of schools from March 2020, even up to just last month, uh, in terms of onboarding onto these different platforms. I think one of the areas in which we didn't put too much attention on is the number or the amount of screen time that our kids would now have. Because in the past, you would have said, okay, well, two hours screen time for the day, and that would have been done for, for pleasure, right, for playing. But now the same device, the same mechanism that they're using uh, to, to learn is what they're also using to play. And I think that we didn't put too much emphasis on that. We were focusing on, should it be Google Classroom? Should it be Microsoft? Should we use Zoom? And we were looking more on the operational aspects and not the long-term effects. And I think that's where, if I had to look back and make a different call, it would have been, let's, let's look at it from a holistic perspective, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Let's ensure that when we're scheduling classes on a day, we have breaks, right? And that break moves away from the screen. Yes. Right, because again, it's it's trying to break away from that, you know, uh, regular internet usage and, and so on. And, and I think all of that leads to my concept of internet idleness, mm -hmm. right? Because you're always on the screen and you eventually look out the internet. I'm <laughs> sure it's a possibility, and you end up looking at things that really wasn't meant for you. You you, you know, Darren, Daniel, sorry. Mm -hmm. Now that we're talking about it, mm -hmm. the dangers existed before. Yes. What we're looking at now is a more ready access mm -hmm. to those dangers. Could mm -hmm. you give us a, a little bit of an overview of what existed before and what you're seeing now? Well, what existed before 
was centered around more uh, adults as it relates to them being online more than the kids. Um, but with the trust or the push into the direction of online learning, it has now opened a door for the criminal elements to have access to our most treasured, uh, I, I want to put it, uh, treasured, the things we hold dear to our hearts, our children. Uh, and even piggybacking off of what um, Darren was saying in terms of what could have been done better or what uh, they say um, hindsight uh, is 20, 20 <laughs> vision, right? Yeah. So what could have been done better is this thing where uh, the, the schools could have identified a specific platform for online learning instead of the situation where you have um, different platforms being chosen by teachers, uh, different schools, different platforms. And it, that opens a door that uh, persons who are vulnerable, they can become susceptible to these, uh, I, I, I call them land sharks. <laughs> <laughs> they come in, they, they yeah. come heavy because not we, you see when there's a whole hysteria, they look for these spaces where they could get in and exploit our children. Something was also mentioned. I, I want to throw in that plug now because um, uh, we talked about um, exploitation and online grooming. Uh, the Children's Act, uh, Chapter 4601, Section 25 says, because we want the public to understand that there are things that have been covered in the law uh, as it relates to this thing called online, because it's happening. People want to meet people online pretending they are children uh, some of the games that the young people play and stuff, you find they are connecting with strangers in different countries across different platforms and they're talking to them and we think is a friend next door and is somebody quite in another country. Section 25 says where a person has on at least two earlier occasions met or communicated with a child in Trinidad and Tobago or elsewhere by means, by any means, including the internet, for the purpose of sexual grooming and he meets attempts to meet or travel for the purpose of meeting the child in Trinidad and Tobago or elsewhere with the intention of doing anything to or in respect of the child during or after the meeting which if done in Trinidad and Tobago would constitute a commission of an offense under part V and this part the person commits an offense. A person who commits an offense under subsection 1 is liable on summary conviction to a fine of $50,000 and to imprisonment for 10 years. On conviction, huh? Yeah, yeah but we're going further. Mm -hmm. On conviction, on indictment to a fine of $100,000 and to imprisonment for 20 years. And I'm, I'm going to close off that little segment but for people to understand what is this sexual grooming that they're speaking about. They say for the purpose of this section, sexual grooming means gaining the trust mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of a child yes. or of a person who takes care of that child for the purpose of sexual activity with the child. So that has changed. You are seeing now where that is coming more prevalent and we must be conscious of it. And I'll give an example quickly. I'm going to take in too much earlier. Thank <laughs> God. Well, let me finish quick. Let me finish quick. Yes. We recently had an issue that came to our office with a child sending, I was t telling them about it, a child sending uh, uh, um, an assignment. Remember I told you all about mm -hmm. that? And the assignment happened to be pictures of herself. She made a mistake. Mm -hmm. She made a mistake and sent that as the assignment. It was a mistake. Mm -hmm. But that opened a door now to understand who were you taking pictures yes. for? So that is the that is the, the that is the reality of what's taking place online. Alessia, mm. how, how are our <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. how do parents receiving this little bit of information? How are they now to process that without becoming now afraid, hysterical? I think what we really need to move is how we think about our children. We need to move from the good and the bad. It's a good child and a bad child. Children are children. As I said, we need to understand too that the brain is developing. 
adolescence actually runs from age 9 to 24. That's going to surprise people. Wow. We think about teenager, 13 to 19, mm. but that development runs from 9 to 24. Mm. The brain is developing and is developing in, in different stages. During adolescence, the child's brain is primed to respond to emotion and excitement. The part that we want and we think we have, the judgment, the reasoning, is, the, is in the forebrain, is not there till much later. So it's not a matter of a good child, bad child. Mm. It's a child who is primed for excitement and is curious and is looking for connection. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And will go online and be trusting and innocent and not understand the implications of what they're doing. Mm. This is the reason why a child who, who unguarded gets themselves in trouble is not a bad child. Mm. And you can't sit down and say, well, my child would never do that because mine is a good child. <laughs> They're children. And they're vulnerable because they're going at that at that aisle didn't stick with Medan. We didn't talk about that before. But they're online, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're bored, mm -hmm. they're curious, they're missing their friends. They find the trouble, trouble finds them. Mm. And we think that they have the judgment and they don't. They simply don't. Mm. And so we have to engage with our children. We have to put these systems in place and we have to engage with our children to help them understand the dangers. And to meet, the, I will say the same thing for the next hour, and to meet the need as far as we can that they, that they go in looking for online. Now, we also have to add to that mix, in my opinion, mm -hmm. the language that's being used. Mm -hmm. Some of these social platforms, and, and I know we want to touch on some of those social sites as well, you click and you have friends. You don't click on stranger I don't know, let me see and engage and see if they're okay. That's not the, that's not the option. Hmm. And children are trusting. Yes. So yes. there's an internalization of yes. there are mm -hmm. friends there. Mm -hmm. how, how do you safeguard against that from a, from a technological place? It's, it's something I mention all the time, Wendell. Um, we we want to have more followers, we want to have more friends. You know why? It increases our social status. Now kids are not physically in school to beef up that social status. Mm -hmm. So where they do it, they do it online. This is why we have kids doing internet challenges. Now, adults might look at these inter internet challenges and think that's so ludicrous. But the fact of the matter is, that's part of the social status sphere. Mm -hmm. So if I didn't engage in that internet challenge, my social status is low. So this is why they engage in it. Now, they want more people to see it, so they add all the friends. They, they, they take in all the requests. Now, the downside to that is oh. you forget. You forget that you had Daniel three years ago, <laughs> right? And now you're going to put something that you really didn't want him to see, yes. mm. right? Because, you know, he's not close to you. Mm -hmm. That's why you said open up yourself. And I mean, that, 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 that leads to a whole host of different conversations. Now, there's one thing I wanted to touch on what Daniel spoke about mm. as it pertains to, you know, this online grooming. Now, and again, I don't want to get on too much of a scary road, but human trafficking, is, it, it is linked to it. And I wanted to make a point, just so that parents have a visualization. Human trafficking doesn't necessarily mean the physical movement of one person no. from a place to another place. Mm. You could be trafficked right in your room, yes. just yes. by the extortion of inappropriate images of the individual. So there are some telltale signs that parents need to be aware of. If you find that you know your your kid is you know very reclusive, you know they're hiding all the time, uh, there may be something else on toward that you know you should be looking into. You know, just throw in a, I want to throw in a little sure. a little plug on that. When you hear the, the when you hear the letters P O S, what comes to mind? Port of Spain. Say it louder, say it louder. Port of Spain. Port of Spain, <laughs> right? A child typing in POS mm -hmm. means parent over shoulder. Just to touch on what yes, yes. he's saying. Mm -hmm. So he talk about the person being reclusive. As soon as you come in the room, they type in POS and you're thinking, oh, somebody coming to, he talking, somebody in Port of Spain. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. it, it is a highlight for the person to know, let's cut the content do, and wait till my parent leave the room. So that's, a, that's an understanding of the mind. Now, that, I, 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 I want to throw that in relation to um, the, the, um, the presenter here. Mm -hmm. She said something so profound when she spoke towards, it's not a bad child. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's where I, 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 I think that message must be mm -hmm. you know, thrown, thrown in there. 
she's not it's not a bad they mm. may even if you catch your child doing something that is wrong it is that does not mean it's a bad child it's just it was our wrong it's choice we have to be our children's four brains we have to help them think these things through and actually we can l help our children learn from their mistakes so here's the difficulty they're online so much more than before you can put all your systems in place and trouble still find them mm -hmm. it's not for us to collapse and, and get terrified and beat the child in the road that's a whole conversation by itself mm. We can use the child's experience to help them learn, right. yeah? Because halfway down the line, one of the difficulties with grooming is the complicity that a child can feel. Because it started as a friendship. So the person was nice, mm -hmm. and they talk well to them. Mm -hmm. And they, they sometimes even feel protective of this person early in the game. And when you, the big bad parent, comes in and starts making noise, you suddenly have this child either defending this person or feeling guilty and not wanting to talk about it because they were complicit in it. They felt as if they were a willing partner. Mm. So it gets very, very confusing because it messes with their mind. I need to journey with my child to help my child realize I made a mistake. Let me, let me interject there. Doesn't this online experience then fast track what would normally be a human encounter? Yes. So, mm. so therefore, if I'm in school, I, I'm and I'm in form one, let's mm, say, mm. I meet a stranger. Mm -hmm. We share stories because we're in the same classroom. Mm -hmm. Eventually that evolves into a friendship. Mm -hmm. We may have a disagreement here or there. We start working each other out. But online, it's always your so-called best self forward. <laughs> it's not as real, eh? How, And it's not real. How does that complicate things mm -hmm. from a parental perspective in seeing this happening? and seeing this surge of mm -hmm. friends and conversations, and, and now we've tossed into that mix a coded language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does a parent navigate that space? One of the guidelines we want to give our children, starting with the younger ones and then working their way up as you show their skills are strengthened, to only befriend children who you know in real life, online. Mm -hmm. Start with a safe circle. These are the people that you know, yeah? We have to also then engage our children in conversation. This is why I have a real concern with how we have been parented, many of us. What I call the buff and beat mentality. Because that ain't leaving room for much discussion and conversation. But I need to come and ask my child, how is your relationship with this person? How are you doing? What went on in class today? I need to be hearing on a regular basis. Casual conversation, what the relationship is like. The one who's bullying you online many times is the one who's bullying you in real life. The one who was your real friend on on online often was the one who was a real friend in real life. Mm -hmm. And so I need to engage my child in conversation to understand where they act and ask questions. How do you feel about how she's treating you? Is it worth it to go through that for likes? I think as parents, we try to sound like we know all the time, but the fact of the matter is we have to play dumb. Mm -hmm. I need to ask you, how that work in for you? Is that what you really want? Is that okay? I would feel funny if that happened. How about you? and engage our children so that they start to think for themselves, well, no, that's not really what I want to be doing. Mm. We have to engage yeah, them. engage the conversation. Yeah. And I yes. think that, that is something that I think is missing yeah. um, a lot of the times. Because uh, if you're not a parent, you know who's a parent? Google. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? And, 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 and with that, you're going to find an avenue to a whole host of different options. Um, I'm a firm believer of age limits, restrictions for apps. Right, it's one of the points that I give the parents as well. So these apps have an age limit because they know, the developers of these apps know that there's uh, you know, inappropriate or adult content there. We would have seen some very unfortunate situations right here in Trinidad and Tobago of the TikTok platform. Mm -hmm. And TikTok is not the problem. You know, some parents might say, well, well, I'm gonna ban TikTok. But no, TikTok is now, before it was Musical.ly, before that it was Snapchat, before that it was, Right, so it's not really about the app, and that's another, another point that I think parents need to be aware of. It's not about a particular app, but it's about understanding how to use the app appropriately. I think, you know, Inspector, lead it towards that. You know, we, we all have the same tools, but how we actually use them, you know, is, is really the trick of the trade. I, I, in earlier on, when I mentioned, the, you know, sometimes a parent think that they have to be an expert, mm -hmm. online expert or technology expert. That's not the message. Mm -hmm. 
the message is is not to let me go now and see if I could become whatever. That's not the message. The message is let me as a parent get more involved. And it starts it starts simply by the platform that the, the child is using for school. That's a simple thing. It takes a couple minutes. You go, you YouTube it, you Google how to use Zoom. If that is what they're using, mm -hmm. what are the guidelines? What are the safety? And when we were discussing earlier, remember having the conversation with the child does two things. One, it allows you to see exactly where your child mm -hmm. is at. That, mm -hmm. that is what the conversation is. So, so, so a simple little thing. Uh, show me how you send your, uh, your assignments. It may seem a simple question, but it does two things. It teaches you, if you don't know, <laughs> because many times the child knows more than you about the technology. Let's be real. Almost every time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then the second thing now, you on top your game to know what my child knows. And that, to me, begins the conversation of, A, I must be able to at least know the platform and how it operates. Food. Yes. By asking my child about how this system works or what to do, I build their sense of competence. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The child that I want is a child who's securely attached to me mm -hmm. and feels safe in that relationship. They feel validated, they feel confident about who they are, and they're growing in competence and their ability to handle themselves online. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And because that's their future. We've just brought the future close a whole lot faster. Yeah. The jobs right. our children are going to have. We don't even know the names of them jobs yet. Mm -hmm. Some of them may make yet, yeah. right? Um, this is their world. They are, they are going to be online. Technology is going to be it. I can't keep hiding and protecting my child. But we have to accept that, though. That's that, that, yeah, that's what we said. So we have to accept it and not just run scared. I think many of us as parents are running scared. When we hear the dangers, and the dangers are very real, and the amount of things we have to do as parents, we run scared. But I have to empower a child by asking a child how to do this, how to do that. My seven-year-old sends his, his, his homework off to his teacher before I could turn around to find out <laughs> he, he done send yeah, it, yeah. right? That builds a sense of competence. It builds a sense of confidence. The stronger my child is, the less likely they are going to be going looking for trouble or getting lost in mm -hmm. the trouble online. What Gwendal was alluding to was that we have to accept that this is, mm -hmm. I mean, pardon the cliche, the new norm. Mm -hmm. yes. We're not going to go back to uh, January 2019. Yeah, we're not going back. But, but then, then should, should we try, try start, start changing, changing that, that dialogue? Mm -hmm. Yes. The new norm has somewhere that little bit of a percentage of it, meaning maybe one day we'll get the old norm back. Are we collectively, from, from your various uh, professions, do you get the sense that we are ready to move forward? Or are we still holding on to what was with the sensibilities and the training and the expectations of a time that's gone? Well, one thing that we know is that, uh, and you all could correct me, I'm not a subject expert on what I'm about to say. <laughs> if it's one thing humans don't like, is change. Amen. Don't like it. COVID has pushed us in a direction that we, let's just say we were walking, now we have to speed up, we are running at a high pace to catch up because the whole digital economy is linked to us getting on board with what's going on. Even the government is pushing heavy to digitize so many platforms and, and access the information and stuff. So therefore then, we need to accept up to a point, yes, we need to accept, but further than that, acceptance is the first step. What are you going to do with that acceptance? So it's not just hearing that there's a change. It's now, what, how can I act upon it? And it begins with the parents getting more involved. And I'm seeing that, I mean, from on my side, um, we have situations where schools, schools are coming to us at the cyber and social media unit and they are coming with issues that are happening while classes are going on. You have issues where children are posting up while classes are going. Pornography. Imagine that. And they are using that as a means to stop the class, a disrupt. You know, long ago, well, I shouldn't say long ago, you'll hear bomb scare. Mm -hmm. 
you hear somebody make a phone call and a bomb scan, that's it for the day. Every mm -hmm. Now that has gone online, Zoom bombing, mm -hmm. where they're coming online, throwing in these items and thinking is going on. So one of the recommendations I received from a teacher and I started passing because I realized it makes sense. When these things happen, continue to teach. Don't stop because you're sending a message that if yeah, you if you stop, stop you're, you're saying, saying, oh, this is a way I can close. Because remember, this is the new norm. We mm -hmm. have to be there to learn. Yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that children do dumb things. Mm -hmm. They act without thinking. Their behavior is worse in front of their friends, right? So that decision making, and this is probably not a good idea, is not necessarily going to be there. They, they want to look good in front of their friends. Mm -hmm. And so we have to work within that reality. We have to continue to teach. And we have to put systems in place mm -hmm. to treat with those behaviors. Yeah, you know, the thing is to behind the screen as well, you have this sense of you know freedom. You feel like you know no one's it's watching. I'm not I'm not around, so I could probably get away with with, with a lot more. Um, I, I, you know, Daniel, it's everyone is thrown into the deep end. Yes. The teachers, the students, the parents, and you know, without any floating devices, we were just there trying to you know mm -hmm. make probably the focus the way in which things were happening, mm -hmm. and. You know, that's probably what it feels like to a lot of parents. Um, and I'm, I'm not trivializing the, 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 the entire landscape of technology and how it can be used to assist. But definitely, I mean, I want the parents to be reassured that even though technology might be the thing that we are complaining about, mm -hmm. at the same time, a little bit of understanding of it can help you out of that fear to help manage, you know, along with some of these mm -hmm. techniques, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, my other two esteemed colleagues <laughs> are mentioning <laughs> as well. No, but it has to work yeah, together. It definitely, to definitely, definitely. It's not one, it's not, you know, connection and not protection. That's right. I, we have to have the filter and the but monitor. Could I steal that from you? Which one? Connection. It's connection. connection. <laughs> <laughs> and not protection. <laughs> right? We have to set limits. Um, I, there's a three-step three 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 way to think about it, right? We have to stop back, sit back and look at what our children are doing online. Right? The quantity of time, what they're doing, why are they online, and what's the outcome. Right? We have to then look at what need is my child trying to meet by being online. Are they looking for connection and relationship? Not, are they looking for a sense of who they are and what is right and what is wrong? That shouldn't be coming from the internet. Or are they looking for a sense of agency, a sense of this is what I'm good at? Right? That's where some of the gaming and things come in. Is that what they're looking for online? Those are good needs. It shouldn't be met by the internet. Well said. Right? Well said. Uh, and so the last part of the plan is, how can I help my child have a healthy, safe online experience? Mm. Because they have to be online. There are dangers. How can I help them do this in a safe, positive, healthy way? That's where the limits come in, mm. the systems, the, 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 the programs and so on, right? The monitors and so on. I'm losing my words because technology is not my part <laughs> thing, right? Those things are necessary, but they must sit within a context. Mm. Yeah. The context is you are my child. Mm. This is what I want for you. Mm. This is our relationship. You don't have to go looking elsewhere for what I have to give you here. I will teach you right and wrong. I will teach you that who you are and teach you your value. I will encourage you and I will see how strong you are. Right? Mm -hmm. by, by the things that we do in our family. Don't go looking for that elsewhere. When I'm stronger here, I'm better off. As we continue this discourse, I think it's um, about time we allow members of the viewing public wow. to chime in. So that number to call, 622-4010. That number again, 622-4010. We'll continue the discussion, and as the calls come in, we'll interrupt ourselves and allow our callers to have their say as well. Yes, yes, yes. Daniel, I, I want you to drive home for us that we are facing a dangerous space. Yeah. We, we, we can't al allow devices to pair on for us because we're too busy. Yes. yes. And there are certain other realities. There are parents who are off to work and their children are home with senior citizens who are self-proclaimed, not sec tech savvy. <laughs> What are the immediate dangers? I'm looking for a tangible example that has happened here in, in Trinidad and today. One of the immediate dangers that comes out 
as it relates to this new normal that we are speaking about is that thing called cyberbullying. Uh, there's a reason I nearly every lecture I do, every I keep touching it. <sighs> cyberbullying has become just like how you say the internet is the new norm, that has become the new norm. Yeah. Because what is happening is people have found a way to in terms of what they feed upon. There's a saying that what you eat you become. Mm -hmm. the, you, you, they are feeding on a content of violence that's coming across all the platforms, the movies we watch, the, 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 the music you listen to and all these things. So that is transferring now into the conversations you have. And this cyberbullying issue now is pushing to the point where people, young people, are committing suicide. Well, hold on to that talk yes. right there. We have a caller from Dabidi. Caller, welcome. Hello, good evening. Is it the panel? Yes, welcome. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dexter. I'm from Yes. And um, I'm listening to the program, and it's very informative. And um, I'm learning a lot from what you are uh, saying on the panel right now. And um, what I would like to... Um, the real benefit, I would like to watch with my children. Um, are you, are you, will, will you be doing a repeat of, the, of, the, of, the, of um, this program? I would be forced to, to guide you towards the offices of the Telecommunications <laughs> Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. We, we'd love to, but we are here uh, courtesy TAT as well. So we say thanks to oh, TAT for okay. facilitating, facilitating us this evening. Okay, then. Thank you. To the caller, though, um, you know, we would have had different conversations mm -hmm. over the years. Yes. Luckily, cyber safety team would have been able to record some of those conversations, which speak about a lot of these same topics. Yes. So, you know, on our website, you know, on our YouTube channel, you can actually get access to, you know, the same narrative, get your tips and your tricks. A lot of the things that we would have mentioned here, you know, is also available. So, definitely something that, you know, um, they could always revert to. Before, Before you do, we're, we're heading to South Trinidad. Oh. Caller from San Fernando. Caller, welcome. Hi, um, good night. Mm -hmm. um, I have a little issue from since last year when the COVID period started my children. Right? Sure. Um, what happened? My son and them, we, used to, we do Google Classroom and do Zoom, right, in their school. And a hacker came into the system. We didn't know that it was a hacker, but it remained dormant in our system. It looking like for a little while. And it seems that the Zoom, anytime he entered the Zoom classes and things like that, he always used to get bumped off and be always thinking it's our Wi-Fi internet. Mm -hmm. um, we, we changed from green dot to, to, to flow, and now we are d d digital. And what happened now, for his birthday this year, right, which was um, on the 29th of January, it revealed himself and it started to curse him and, and do him these things and, and send messages to my, well, my son is 11 years old and my daughter is 7 years old. Wow. And it entered the system and it started to abuse him on the phones, it lock up the phones, it lock up everything. It, it, it is in our system all now. Um, today, it, it, it went into my wife's phone, right, and uh, put in his own email address something, lock up her phone and put her own email address while he was in a Zoom class. The, the school provider a um, um, uh, device for him. In one week time, we even connect it up to our home, right? We use it in her workplace, and it has its own... Um, the mobile SIM card thing to get the data, and it still got him, right? And it still got my daughter also with a new other device with data. So I don't know what to do here because I'm, I, I went to cybercrime. I went to the police station. Nobody has contacted me. They told me that they asked to get a warrant to come and get my devices. I carried up in cybercrime and nobody had taken it. I don't know what to do again. I'm very frustrated. Okay, Cola, listen off here. We'll see how best we can address your concern. Yes. Um, uh, let's do it twofold. Mm -hmm. um, firstly, mm -hmm. this sounds yes. criminal to me. Yes, yes it, it is. is. Um, now, I want to be very careful um, in how we address the terminology cybercrime because um, many persons are of the view 
that anything that happens across the internet, it's a cyber crime. And that is not so. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that right now we don't have any laws, right now as we speak, that speak specifically to cyber crime. But that has been addressed at a government level, right? So just now you will hear the advent of the, uh, the, com the Computer Misuse Act where they are going to do an amendment and that is going to be dealt with. I don't want to go too far into yes. it because it's, it's being dealt with at another place. Now, many times persons uh, want to deal with things specifically like the caller there. They want to bring their devices. But remember, we have to follow what is policing. We have to follow certain areas. And sometimes somebody says, so let me just go and carry. No, no, no. We have to have an investigator. Mm -hmm. The investigator now will apply the situations as it relates to warrants. The correspondence will bring the item. Then we also have the COVID situation. So there are protocols to follow because we don't want an infected situation to actually come into our situation. We have to prepare for that also. So there are some other things. So, so uh, we'll talk about the numbers and whatnot that persons could get in because I'd like to speak to that guy to find out exactly what, what transpired, okay. and then we could go with that. So yeah. we'll hold on to that. Yes. I, I don't want to keep our caller from Tobago much longer. <laughs> caller, welcome. Hi, good evening. Um, good evening. Thank you for your program. I wanted to find out what are some of the parental platforms that you would recommend. At the moment, um, my family, we downloaded Norton as well as um, Google Link, Family Link, but somehow my children have found a way to get around it. Um, are there any platforms that you recommend? Darren? Yes, so uh, definitely Family Link from Google is, you know, one of the more popular ones, but it's also quite easy, you know, to bypass. A simple Google search, unfortunately, will, you know, give the kid the, the, the options. Um, I like to advise parents that if you are looking at parental controls, address it at the router level, right? So that's, that's you know, higher than the device itself. That's all your internet access in your home. Um, you would have your username and password to access it as you, the parent, and you have full control. That way, you know, you can do your content filtering, your screen time management right there at the router level. If you need to get into the device, each device platform, whether it is Android or iOS, they also have built-in parental control options. So you can take your kid's phone, you punch in your password, and you set your guidelines right there on the phone yes. itself. And that helps, I think, to go a long way in terms of managing that type of access. We, we, we have, have a caller holding from St. James, uh, and the time is flying by. St. James, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for this very informative program. What I wanted to say was that in this COVID time, with the schooling being limited in several ways to digital platforms and so. What I think we are saying is that we need our children to be engaged with the parents, be engaged with trusted people, friends, and to be listened to. But what we have neglected to do is to tell parents and, uh, as it were, the trusted friends, how to listen because in the past as you have agreed we parents have not been listening we have been speaking to telling and uh, seeking to be good to our children but we haven't been listening and our parents don't know how to listen now in in my career i have been teaching life skills and life skills really focuses on helping the person love themselves and have the opportunity to communicate in that intimate way, in, in that trusting way, on a one-to-one -one basis where the parent is not judging and, um, as it were, cajoling and correcting, but rather listening and as it, respecting the intelligence of a child mm. to, to, be, to be frank in what possible solutions and the feelings, etc. So I just think that is a little but very important notch in the conversation, that all our conversations around the changing world and the, the post-COVID world, we are forgetting. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are facing a tsunami of mental health issues. We are under tremendous stress. We are asking, it sounds like we're asking parents to do even more, and parents are juggling plenty. 
yeah? Um, what we're describing isn't adding more work. It's actually going to ease your work. Uh, and it's something that's within your power. So whereas you may have to learn about filters and parental control and feel overwhelmed, and I'm sure Darren will help you if you call him, um, plug there for cyber safe. Um, what we're asking parents to do is doesn't cost anything. We're asking our parents to build, to operate in a collaborative fashion with your children, rather than you having to do these things to them and for them. Let's work towards doing these things with them. Explain the filters and the monitoring and why it's important. We have another call. Yes, our final call for the evening from Tabakit. Welcome. Hi, good evening. Very interesting and informative program. Just a quick question. How can I ban TikTok as my kids are always on it? And, and uh, you know, you, you, I think maybe the focus is not to ban TikTok um, because today's TikTok, you know, tonight it might be top tech, right? A different <laughs> one completely, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's more explaining to the child what's appropriate behavior, you know, why there is need for, a, for them to have a digital detox from the internet sometimes. Mm. Take his time away from the app, you know, go outside, play with the dog, yeah. you know, do yeah. something other than being behind the screen. And you would realize that the app is no longer the problem, right? Uh, you know, th that particular app, you know, because uh, you can pick up any, or any other app. So let's not focus on any one particular social media platform or tool, but let's focus on educating the kid, changing the behavior, you know, dealing with those issues of internet addiction. Mm -hmm. And as I said, you know, we don't want internet idleness to get into the mix at all. Oh. Well, well, we are at that, that place where we're almost to the end. <laughs> um, so we want to take some closing comments. I'm just going to give everybody just about 45 seconds. <laughs> Daniel, I'll start with you. Wow. But I need you to, to address the earlier caller, giving, pointing him in the right direction, the one who had the concern. Yes, I, I, I would like the caller who called to contact the office and ask for me specifically. Um, you could call the 612-0742. Uh, that number again? 612 Zero seven four two, extension one three two three zero one three two three zero or one three two three two. Okay. Do, do contact and ask to speak to me directly um, because I would like to get all the information pertaining to that case and give him some guidance. Right. However, however, there are some things that he himself, as the the parent dealing with certain things that he's dealing with. There are some things that he has to be aware of and certain things uh, that you can do as a parent to protect yourself from some of these things. Sometimes your child might be sharing the, 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 uh, the passwords and also the links as it relates to the classes that may come. We are asking parents to have that discussion with their children. And this is not necessarily the, the, the parent who called, but no, it could be the classmates the within class, the classroom. Yes, right. all of that. Right. Um, additionally, additionally, um, when the conversation starts about that, you find it opens a door for dialogue, and I and, and that also pushed to the next. The, the what um, Darren was was in uh, with the lady with the TikTok or uh, talk <laughs> tick, <laughs> you know. So uh, in terms of that, that is the first thing I would look at, and and in my closing remarks, because I realized we're, we're under a minute. Oh, good. We're going <laughs> in my closing remarks. I am asking parents to get time away from the devices with their children. That's my closing. That's my closing. I can give you 30 seconds. Oh gee, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> A three-step plan. Observe your children. Observe what they're doing online, mm -hmm. how much time they're spending, why mm -hmm. they're online, and what they're like when they come off. Second part. Uh, ask yourself, what needs are they trying to meet by being online? Is it that they would rather spend time with you and you're busy so they're there? Are they bored? Are they just overwhelmed with school and zoning out? Are they idling? What are they doing? Are they creating content and starting a YouTube channel and it's actually something positive? What are they doing online? And third question, how can I help my child have a more positive uh, online experience? There are things that are working. There are things that aren't. What do I need to do?
I have to shave some of your time. <laughs> Let's go. Do not be afraid to be the parent in the virtual world, just as how you are the parent in the real world, right? Overcome that fear of technology being that, you know, metal door to, to, to break down. Um, get to know the platform, have that conversation with your kids, and as I mentioned before, ensure that that digital detox is part of your day-to-day -day routine. That will allow you as a parent also to have that connection with your parents when there are no screens around. This, my friends, is where we have to draw the curtains on this evening's presentation. On behalf of the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago, TAT, we say thank you to our panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you to you, the viewers. Let's continue this discourse. And, of course, I have to say thank you to our technical team here at TTT. Let's continue the conversation. Visit TAT's website. But more importantly, let's work together to protect our children online. My name is Wendell Atien. Good evening.